scripture before us is one of the more famous stories in scripture, although I think the uh, subtleties of the passage are not as well known, but uh, the story itself is very well known in the culture and amongst Christians. And uh, upon my research of this passage today, I found a, uh, a commentary by William Barclay on this, on this whole section of scripture in John's Gospel. And from him, I found the title, Our New Exhilaration. This is the second chapter of John's Gospel, and I'm sharing with you the first 11 verses of that Gospel. Let us share together the teachings of Holy Scripture. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rite of purification, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them to the brim. And he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine, he did not know where it had came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. And the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. May God have God's blessing to the reading of the word. When I was struggling, struggling as a young boy growing up to try to complete a task in life, I would often have difficulty and go to my dad and ask for his help. And one of the phrases that he often would say to me, it was always kind of a puzzling phrase, but I'm sure it's one you've heard, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Amen. Now, first of all, that phrase always bothered me because I thought to myself, why would you want to skin a cat? I like cats. They're, they're cute, cute creatures, and they're very lovable, great personalities. My mom's cat was all over me this morning as I was trying to get ready. One affection, probably one to get warm. But the more I thought about this phrase, I realized that what it was trying to express is that there's always more than one way to, than to get a job done. It's not like... To complete a task, you have to do it the same way or the way everybody else does it. There might be a different approach that's just as effective and just as meaningful. I bring this up because what I find in life is that life is always full of challenges and tasks to complete. And I think it's normal, common, maybe even human nature to get bogged down in the problems and overwhelmed by the problems. 
where God and Jesus are always seeing problems and struggles as opportunities, as ways to find solutions. And that's why I call this sermon our new exhilaration. Because with Jesus becoming flesh and now revealing his first of what is to be many more signs, God is showing us that with any problem in life, there is a solution. In fact, with every problem in life, there is an opportunity. Do we see those opportunities? Do we focus on those solutions? No, I'm just like everyone else. Sometimes I get overwhelmed by the problems. And all I see is problems. But I can tell you this from my own personal testimony, is that when I'm looking for solutions, is when I find contentment and joy and happiness and peace. It's when I'm in that search to try to fix the problem is where I feel like God is with me. Amen. And when I'm focused on just the burdens of life is when I feel alone. Mm. There are many ways to fix the issues that are about us in life. But you don't get that from our governments. Well, some of them. But our media, from our social interactions on the internet. Rarely do you see individuals and, in, and groups of individuals helping with solutions to problems, mostly what you hear is all the problems. Yes. Jesus is invited to a wedding. And this wasn't a teetotaler wedding. They were drinking real wine. Not the Welch's grape juice stuff. And Jesus is there having a good time. Who says to be a Christian, you got to be boring and have no fun? Yeah. That's not what Jesus is doing. He's at a party having fun. Probably enjoying a glass of wine. And his mother comes to him with problems. Isn't this kind of how Jesus' ministry was? Hey, there's a man dying over here. Hey, there's a woman sick over here. Hey, there's a person over here filled with demonic spirits. Hey, Jesus, are you going to get us out from underneath the Roman thumb? Just so you know. It's all about problems. And Jesus is like, what's that got to do with us? It's not our hour yet. It's not our time to take on the problems of the world yet, Jesus says. But what I find missing in this cute little passage of John's is that immediately after sharing that with his mother, it almost like he rudely dismisses her, mom goes to the servants and says, do whatever he tells you. Amen. What a great advice for life. Do whatever the Lord tells you. But obviously, from the conversation, we've missed something in the passage because it sounds like Jesus isn't going to do anything about this wine issue. And yet Mary knows something's brewing. Maybe it's that woman's intuition thing. Maybe that's that motherly intuition thing. But she goes to the servant, servants, Telling them to do whatever Jesus tells them. Like something's going to happen. Sure enough, Jesus goes to the servants and tells them to find these 
jars of purification. 20 to 30 gallons each and fill them to the rim. I thought just taking the conservative estimate and saying each one was 20 gallons times six, that's 120 gallons of wine. You think my sisters could do that? How much wine in one night? They love their wine. That's a lot of wine. 120 gallons, that's the conservative estimate. A lot of gas. A lot of gas, there you go, a lot of gas. I'm in a big way. And this wine is the best wine. Yes. Jesus didn't mess around with arguing about the root of the problem, the nature of the problem, where the problem was going to go. Jesus looked for a solution of a little minor manner, we might say, in the big scheme of things. A wedding reception is out of wine. It got me thinking. So Adam and Eve didn't do what the Lord told them to do. God found a solution. Humanity went off the deep end and was full of evil. And God went to Noah and said, build an ark and we're going to start over. God told Abraham that he was going to be the father of many nations. More descendants than stars in the heaven or sea sand on the shore. Yes. And yet his wife was barren. Joseph had no respect among his brothers. They hated him so much that they threw him in a well and left him for dead. And God guides Joseph to Egypt and he ends up being the saving grace for the people of Israel. <clears throat> the people go to Egypt to live and they become slaves and have been enslaved for generations when God hears their cries, Scripture says, and brings to this planet Moses. But Pharaoh wanted to kill all the little kids. So what does Moses' mother do? Hides him in the river amongst the reeds where he's rescued by the Pharaoh's daughter and who later grows to be a man with enough courage and strength and godliness of spirit to stand before the most powerful man in the world and say, let my people go. Amen. Solutions. You see? Solutions. Not all just problems and slavery and issues and family dissension and evil. No, 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 no. The Bible is about solutions. We couldn't live up to the law. Either we couldn't or we wouldn't. I think we have the potential to live up to the law within us, but for whatever reason, we each and every one of us fall short and we needed redemption. Yes. Oh, God just could throw all of us in hell, right? Yep, we fell short. There's another one. Send them the other way. No, God sent His Son. And His Son creates the solution for each and every one of us. Life is hard, especially with a worldwide pandemic. This makes it even harder. But even without that in the midst, Seems like every week there's always a new problem cropping up. Seems like every month there's no new issues to deal with. Do we want to focus 
on how horrible life is and how unfair and how we're all a victim? No. No. If we're going to be Christ-like, if we're going to be God-like, we should be looking for solutions. Amen. And really, when you think about it, solutions are opportunities. Problems are opportunities. An opportunity to show God's glory. Just as Moses did, just as Abraham did, just as Joseph did, David, and Jesus, God's own son. Amen. And when we Christians walk through the world complaining about how horrible and rotten and full of issues and problems it is, we're not witnessing to God's glory. We're falling into the same trap of the world that is around us. Instead of looking for solutions. <clears throat> We're having a electrical issue with heating our sanctuary. It's been causing me fits for about three weeks now. I have tried this electrical component, that electrical component. I think I've gone through six electrical components so far. And I still haven't fixed the problem. <laughs> Several hours donated to the cause. I can give up. I can say, well, that's beyond my abilities. Or I can just say, the problems are bigger than my God. I give. Or I can keep plugging away, looking for a solution. Looking for the fix. Looking to make whole and right again. It's the road we all walk on, brothers and sisters. Jesus chose solutions. When the wedding reception was out of wine, he made some more. When the woman had been bleeding for 30 years, he fixed her. When Lazarus passed away, he brought him to life again. And when the world needed a redeemer, he died on the cross for us. Amen. To every problem, there is a solution. Because with God, all things are possible. Amen. I got caught up on my viewing last week on the on the YouTube of all our previous services and I was recalling the one I did about Mother Mary on the Sunday before Christmas. Let's just give her the benefit of the doubt and say she was 15. Unmarried and pregnant. <laughs> that's a lot of problems. <clears throat> and that's enough problems for a lot of us to say, <laughs> It's too much. And what Mary said? Whatever you say, Lord, I am your servant. I will do whatever you ask me to do. Yes. And Mary didn't sit around feeling sorry for herself or complaining to Joseph about what's wrong. She just used her energies to pursue God's will for her life. And is probably one of the most famous females, is the most famous female in the Christian faith. Amen. Because Mary looked for solutions. I still think of that old Barbara Streisand song in the 60s, What the World Needs Now is Love, Sweet Love. And that's true. But what the world really needs right now is solutions. Not other complainers defining what the problems are. We know we got the problems. But where are the problem solvers? Because the solutions are there. We just need those to go have the energy and the desire to pursue those solutions and make them a reality. 
call this a new exhilaration because God was doing something new with us. He was showing us that no problem was too big for any of us. This was a new beginning for God in the sense that He became flesh and one of us. And was born into a world full of problems. Roman rule, perversion of the Jewish religion, a lot of need, a lot of illness, a lot of poverty, a lot of hunger, a lot of lost souls. But in all that, Jesus didn't get overwhelmed with the problems. Jesus found and worked through the solutions. And he's asking us to do the same. There might be a problem on your heart here this morning that seems overwhelming. There might be an issue that you're dealing with in life that you think is no way fixable. Do you believe in miracles? They happen all the time, each and every day, because nothing is impossible with God. This planet is still swirling in its orbit. The sun is still doing its job. The moon is still doing its. The earth itself is still providing water and nutrients for those who live on it. The solution of, you know, the end of the world because of water pollution and air pollution and all the other kinds of you know, global warming. I mean, this plant was supposed to blow up 10 years ago. Not for God. Not for a God of solutions. Not for a God who finds remedies and cures for the problems that we create for ourselves in this world. Give God your issues and problems and allow Him to help you search for the solutions. And when you overcome, you can join the throng of saints who said, yes, we too were able to overcome. Sometimes it takes a miracle. Sometimes it's much smaller and much more subtle. But when it came to saving our souls, cleansing and making us whole, Love and grace. Amen. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.